Good afternoon, Crusader fans, and welcome to 99th and Pulaski for our first broad baseball broadcast of the year. Today, your brothers players will be hosting a CCL Blue Conference matchup versus the DePaul Prep. I'm Brian Sheehan. Alongside me, my color commentator and producer, Brian Dollegale. Dolly, what are you looking for in this one? Yeah, I'm excited for a nice baseball game. It's baseball weather. It's nice and warm, and home game against the Paul Prep. What we could ask for? Be- beautiful day here. 72 degrees, perfectly blue sky, not a cloud in sight. Great baseball weather. Crusaders coming into this matchup after beating DePaul Pep tw- DePaul Prep 12 and f- 12 to 5 on Saturday. Uh, big big offensive game for the Crusaders. Ryan Hartz had a two RBI double. Gavin Treesenberg with a big day. Stole home on a pass ball. Had an RBI hit in the fifth, and then a two RBI single in the sixth. Followed up by their big inning, a four run seventh later that game. And also a big storyline was their pitcher, freshman Brady Cunningham. Six innings, only one run allowed. You know he did he did what he was asked. Did a nice job. And, uh, you know, that, that really helped them. If they can be on like that today with McKendrick on the mound and get that offense going, uh, hopefully get the same result. Your starters defensively for the Crusaders will be Brady Cunningham at first, Jackson and Tannock at short, Aiden Ojava at third, Gavin Treesenberg at short, Derek Holmes in left, Ryan Hart's in center, Chris Doherty in right. Josh Torres behind the plate. And your starting pitcher, number 11, Braden McKendrick. And leading off for DePaul, number 21, Vance Kurakawa. McKendrick's first pitch is a strike, and we are underway. Kendrick, sophomore, good speed on that fastball. Sits around high 80s. Kendrick's 101 is fouled off into the parking lot. Yeah, you saw McKendrick's only a sophomore and showing some young talent on the Crusader team. Is they have a lot of it, a lot of juniors, sophomores, some seniors. It's one thing this Crusader team always has. They always have a lot of depth, a lot of a lot of young guys on here, which is crucial, especially after last season losing big three big seniors in. Cole Van Assen, Amir Gray, and Bryce Nevels. Now going back to that start of the year was a little question mark, you know, around surrounding the pitching staff. Who was going to replace Cole Van Assen as the ace of this rotation? You know, McKendrick definitely plotting himself as one of those guys to fill the hole as he gets the strikeout to start the game. That's going to bring up number four, Addison Latko for DePaul. Kendrick waits the sign from Torres. Kendrick shot grounder right back up to rounding the mound. McKendrick over to first for the second out. So two quick outs here to start the game for the Crusaders. As Espen, Benji Espinosa stepping in with two out. As we're saying with uh, Cole Van Ass and graduating, some guys definitely stepping up. Casey Gimzik doing a great job of being their main guy. A lot of quality starters to back him up. Gimzik coming off his last start was great performance. Another six-inning beauty out of Gimzik. He's been a key factor for this Crusader pitching staff. It's McKendrick's first pitch is in there for strike one. McKendrick's doing a great job. They're still in strikes, not messing around with anything else, just... That's always what you want from a pitcher. You want good efficiency, good efficiency and just throwing the ball in the strike zone. So that misses outside for ball one. And McKendrick's 1-1 one, one is high and outside for ball two. Kendrick, we were talking about McKendrick's speed, high velocity on his fast side. He's also got some great uh, off-speed movement, great two-pitch strike to fool a hitter. 
mess mess up with his timing. Slatko's foul ball looks like it sounded like it hit a car in the parking lot. You have to gotta watch where you park here, brother Rice. You know, whole parking lot's pretty much foul zone. McKendricks one two, swing and a miss. Got him chasing with the off speed. Crusaders send him down one two three. We head to the bottom of the first. No score. Out on the first, getting underway here. Score is 0 0. Crusaders sent down to Paul 1 2 3. As they will come up to the plate here at the bottom of the first. Number 29, Chris Doherty, to lead things off for the Crusaders. Doherty, one of the team captains, really emerged last year onto the surface as a junior. Got great offensive production out of him and then so sort of solidified himself as a leadoff hitter. His first pitch is in there for strike one. The starting pitcher for DePaul is number 13, James McMillan. McMillan's pitch misses low for ball one. McMillan's second is inside, get, clips the inside part of the zone for strike two. Doherty down one, two. Doherty, a, Laura, a Lewis baseball commit. He fouls that off. Him and his classmate, Kale Cosme, both Lewis signees. Cosme for basketball, Doherty for baseball. Yeah, both phenomenal student athletes, you know. As Doherty hits a fly ball into right, and number 14 makes the catch in foul territory. It's Owen Rogg. And it's going to bring up the second baseman, number 13, Jackson Atanik, with one gone here in the bottom of the first. <coughs> McMillan's first pitch is in there for strike one. Atanik, another guy, key returner from last year's state team. Good all-around player as he hits a grounder over to short glove field. Over to first and time for the second out. So McMillan making quick work of the Crusader lineup here early. So with two gone, bottom of the first, shortstop, Gavin Treesenberg going to step in. Treesenberg, big game against DePaul on Saturday. Total of three RBIs in the vic in the win. As Treasonberg fouls it back, and it's one on one. Sounds like it hit another car. 
Gotta watch where you park. Macmillan's 1-1's one high for ball two. Macmillan pitch misses inside for ball three. So 3-1 three hitters count in favor of Treasonburg. Trees chases the off speed inside. Thinks he got a think got a piece of it. Looked a little bit out in front of that. Might have been expecting fastball. So full count for trees. The three two. Trees hits it. Foul ball over by us. And just in front of our station over here out in right field. Yeah, hey, so we're in the outfield. It's a beautiful day to be out here, you know. Just sun out, nice weather, a little bit of a breeze. Definitely a great, great day for some baseball. The 3 2. It's trees, rips it down the left field line. That's going to go foul. Treesburg doing a nice job fighting it off. You know, not going down without a fight, making Macmillan work for the out. It's trees chance break out from the Crusader dugout. That's another foul ball. Out onto 99th, and we'll do it over again. Good battle here between Macmillan and Trees. And that pitch is inside for ball four. So Treasonberg draws the walk after fouling off pitches. And a great at bat there. Yeah, it's not a great at bat. He just battled in there, took the pitches he likes, fouls them off, but they your job sticking in there and keeping up. So now with two outs now and Treasonberg on first. That's gonna bring up the third baseman, number nine, Aiden Nohava. Is that wow, another breakout star last year, really showing his talent as a sophomore and a junior this year is coming back. Pitch inside for gets the clips to the inside zone. Throw it on a first. His tree is able to get just get back in there. Catcher definitely paying attention. Tree's got has has some good speed at first. So if he gets the sign, he will go. Now pick off over to first. They're thinking about him. One one count. That pitch is upstairs for ball two. Hava been a liability at the hot corner for the past two years, last year and now this year. Three one count. That's upstairs for ball four. So after getting two quick outs, Macmillan walks the next two hitters. Now Crusaders have two on with two out and runner in scoring position with a chance to take an early lead. A big at-bat here for the Crusaders, trying to get their bases loaded or get some guys to home and get some some runs. That's going to bring up the designated hitter number eight, Nolan Ramley. Brian, you were a pitcher back in your day. What was kind of the mindset when you, you walk back-to-back -back guys? Um, you know, just you want to you wanna throw it at out, you know, just especially with two outs, you just really want to focus on the hitter and try to make... Try to make your good pitches. You know, take a glance once in a while, but you know, if you start worrying about the hitters or runners, as Ramley hits a high drive, that's gonna get down. That's gonna one hop the wall. Trees is gonna score easily. Nohava rounding third. He's gonna score. And Ramley with an RBI double with two outs. He's in with second easily. That's a big hit there for Saders. You know, a young sophomore coming up first pitch swinging. Saders up two nothing now. Big early lead for the Crusaders as that's been a bit of a struggle for them. You know, they've been having some trouble in early game season. They've been getting runners in scoring position, but then they've been leaving too many on base. Have been able to 
convert when they've had the chance, and that's a big, big RBI there from Ramley. So Hart, Ryan Hartz is going to step in now. <coughs> As Hartz, it's a fly ball into right. Rog calling, it, calling for it and makes the catch for the third out. Crusaders add two on the big RBI double from Nolan Ramoli. It's 2 nothing heading into the top of the second. Top of the second get underway here. Crusaders lead early 2-0. McKendrick on for a second inning of work. As number 14, Owen Rogg, going to lead it off for DePaul. McKendrick's first pitch misses high. Four ball one. And Dolly, we were talking earlier how this Crusader team has a lot of youth on it. I mean, just look at your starting pitcher as a sophomore, your first baseman starting today as a freshman. You know, they just they've got they've got guys around the whole lineup. You know, they've got a good group of underclass and that'll be coming up next year. I mean, this team this this program is set for years to come. Yeah, I mean Ramoli, the guy with the two RBI double, I mean he's a sophomore, right? Yeah, Ramoli. Yeah, sophomore there. Who scored two juniors. And like even looking at last year, like our infield Last year, all but Amir Gray at first base, everybody was sophomores. So having that experience already coming on with your junior being your second year on varsity it helps out with the team tremendously. Yeah, coaching pride, definitely not afraid to start the young guys. If they can play, you're, uh, you're in the lineup. But yeah, every year it seems like Sarge has some new young guys, young talent that's thriving. The Kendrick issues a walk to start off the inning, so Rog will reach. And that's going to bring up number six, Cam Klein. McKendrick's first pitch. Klein shows bunt. Nohaba charging in. Throw over to first. Gets him at first. Rog looking to third, but holds up at second. Nice player there from Nohaba. Yeah, Nohaba definitely showing off his talent there. Did advance the runner, but it's an out. It's going to bring up number 18, Aiden Ball. Runner on second, one out, top of the second. McKendrick's first pitch is upstairs for ball one. To Paul looking to answer back after surrendering surrendering to the to the crusaders in the bottom of the first it's 
As McKendrick's going to step off. Pick off the second. And Rog is back in there. Tree is calling for it. Thought they had a play there. And McKendrick misses inside. That's going to hit the hit him. So now DePaul has two runners on with only one out. That'll be a hard hit there. He's going to try and walk that one off going to first. Ball a little slow to get down the line. Guy in the first and second house is kind of a big opportunity here for DePaul with one out. Tie it. As McKendrick's first pitch misses for ball one. Charlie Pribble at the plate for DePaul. McKendrick steps off. Pribble fouls it off into the parking lot. This time did not hit a car. This count's going to move to 1-1. One one. McKendrick's 1-1 one one delivery. It's in there for strike two. Purple with a little half swing there. Might have been looking for something off speed and got surprised by a heater. As Purple fouls it off, count remains one and two. Two on, one out for DePaul. Looking to get on the board in the second. There's a chopper. Nice play by McKendrick. Over to first for one. That's all they get. What a play by McKendrick. That is not an easy play. Quick comebacker right up him. Had to hop up and grab it. And had to make the quick throw over to first. He made that play look easy when it's not. That's going to bring up number five, Dylan Hecht. Yeah, they're saying it's kind of hard for some of these pitchers to make that move, but sure enough, it's just a baseball talent there. So two out here in the second. Runners on second and third for DePaul. Two runners in scoring position. McKendrick looking to get out of a little jam. That first pitch misses high for ball two. Kendrick's two out delivery. Hecht fouls it off. Torres gives the sign to McKendrick. McKendrick kicks, fires. Swain and a miss from Heck. That's strike two. It's like a little off speed there over the top of the zone. Two two count. Let's see if McKendrick tries to go upstairs with the heater. He went fastball, but Heck got a piece of it and fouls it off. I would go right back to that pitch if I'm McKendrick. 
and he did, but Heck does doing a nice job of recognizing the ball out of McKendrick's hand, getting another foul off. Two on, two out here in the top of the second. Crusaders lead 2 nothing. McKendrick's 2-2 delivery is inside for ball three and count runs full. Kendrick trying to get out of the inning with zero damage done. The 3-2 is popped up. Nohava running in. Coach is screaming, let it go, as it looks like it bounced into foul territory. Hecht putting together a good at bat here, was fouling off some good pitches that McKendrick was throwing at him, having a good eye. Yeah, just trying to stay alive here, especially with guys on second and third, trying to do whatever it takes to stay alive. Kendricks 3-2 that's ripped into left Holmes chasing after it that's going to be down for a fair ball two runs are going to come across Holmes putting his hands up that's going to be a ground rule double and we are tied just like that it's a tied ball game so it's similar to that Treasonberg at bat Treasonberg in the top of the second was fighting off good pitches put together really good at bats Ended up drawing the walk. This time, Heck put up a really good at bat. Ended it off with a two RBI double. Off. Yeah, you know, the young sophomore kind of got comfortable with himself there and gave him a easy pitch. First pitch is swung on a miss from strike one. Kendricks 0-1. It's upstairs for ball two. McKendrick trying to regroup and focus after letting up the two-run double. That pitch is fouled back into the net, and it's a 1-2 count. <laughs> Dolly, what are we thinking here? Trying to go upstairs with fastball? A little off speed? What are we feeling? I think it's come up with the heater and just make him. I don't even think at it. And he go, yeah. does go with the heater. Struck, strikes him out to end the inning. But DePaul adds two to tie the game. We are knotted up at two going into the bottom of the second. Bottom of the second, getting underway here as Derek Holmes stepping in to lead things off for the Crusaders. Crusaders 
looking to respond after DePaul tied it up in the top half of the second. As Holmes hits a fly ball into right, and that's caught for the first out. So one pitch, one out for McMillan, and that's going to bring up the freshman, number 34, Brady Cunningham. Talk about young age, he's a freshman. I am very, very big for his size. Yeah. A lot of power in that bat. His first pitch is, or excuse me, second pitch is low for ball, so it'll be 2 0 on Cunningham. Just high for ball three. Macmillan working a little quick here. McMillan's 3-0. It's in there for strike one. It's Macmillan pitch misses high for ball four. Cunningham draws the walk. And that's going to bring up Josh Torres now. Cunningham takes his lead over at first. Torres looking to advance him around the bases. As Torres has a fly ball in the left. And the catch is made for the second out. Lineup flips over now. Back up to the top. Chris Doherty digging in with two gone. Pickoff move over to first. Both these starters are southpaws, so runners on first have to watch out for that quick move that lefties have advantage of versus a right-handed pitcher. So that pitch is inside for ball one. Pitch is in the dirt for ball two. Nice job behind the plate to block it. The 2 0 for McMillan. Gets the inside zone for strike one. So Doherty hits a slow roller over to first. Tough play. And is called out at first after a bang bang play to end the inning. Doherty put a good effort into it, made it as close as possible. So we head to the third inning. Score is tied 2-2. Two to two.
Top of the third, getting underway here. Score all knotted up at two. Number 21, Vance Kurakawa. Coming up for his second at bat of the day. You know, Dolly McKendrick letting up the two runs last inning. How do you come out of that, respond, and get a quick inning here? Yeah, I mean, just kind of let it, just kind of let it brush over, you know, not think about it too much. Go out there, it's a new inning. Yeah, just go out there, clean head, and hammer the strike zone. Ryan, you're the pitcher. We should be asking you this. What are you? Uh, what are you thinking? I mean, yeah, you just like you said. Is there's a fly ball in the center field? Hart's racing back, makes the catch for the first out. Uh, you know, like you said, you just gotta gotta clear your mind. Um, you know, what's in the past is in the past. Just forget about it. Focus focus on the hitters now, and uh, you know, make your best pitch. Yeah, you know, that's kind of what makes good pitchers good pitchers. Guys that don't think too much and just go out there and let their talent speak for itself. Oh, quote from the Sandlot, you know, this is baseball. I got to stop thinking, just have fun. Baseball is a mental game. game, but, you know, just focus and don't overthink everything and be successful. Easier said than done, though. Yeah. First pitch is down low for ball one. Kendrick goes upstairs for ball two. Kendrick's 2-0 delivery is fouled off back into the parking lot. Latko takes a look at strike two. And McKendricks come back to even up the count at two and two after falling behind two and zero. Oh. A two-two delivery. So there's a chopper. Another plague by McKendrick. Another quick comebacker making it look easy for the second out. Hey, yeah, you know those are good quality outs to get from the pitcher. You know some guys can, like you said, to think too much and get choked up by them. And I feel like that play, but. That's a good job. So McKendrick doing a nice job of working quickly here in the third inning. As Espinoza is going to step in for the second time today. Kendrick's first pitch in there for strike one, starting off in an off speed. Kendrick's 0-1. He's in there for strike two, so Kendrick ahead er quickly 0-2 on Espinoza. Kendrick really found his, his pitches once again. He had a little struggle there, but he's back to... Check swing. Did he go? Yes, he did. McKendrick ends the inning with a strikeout. As we head to the bottom of the third, score remains 2-2. Two to two.
Bottom of the third getting underway here. Jackson and Tannik stepping in to lead things off for the Crusaders. Macmillan's first pitch was in there for strike one. Macmillan's pitch goes outside. Count even at 1-1. Tannik, the ISU commit, recently committed there during the fall. As there's a liner over to short, throw over to first is in time for the first out of the inning. Kirkoa doing a nice job handling that. One out away, Gavin Treesenberg going to step in. Treesenberg, another D1 commit. He committed to Arizona earlier this year. And Treesenberg swings on the first pitch. That's going to fall down for a base hit. Treesenberg going for second. Latko having trouble feeling it. And Treesenberg's in with the stand-up double. Good way for the Crusaders to start get rolling here in the third with a leadoff, or excuse me, a stand-up double for Treisenberg. Nohava standing in with the chance to bring him home. It's Nohava skies one that's foul into the parking lot. Yo one pitch from Macmillan is outside, low and outside for ball one. Nohava, the Eastern Michigan commit. A lot of power in his bat. Great defender over at third. So he fouls that off. Hava looking to bring Treesenberg in, help the Crusaders retake the lead. Treesenberg going for third. He's in there safely. Treesenberg steals third. As that pitch misses high. Treesenberg is 90 feet away, representing the go ahead run for the Crusaders. All Nohava has to do now is just put a ball in the outfield, whether it's a hit or a sacrifice fly, and Trees will score. It is high for ball three. So a 3 2 count now for Nohava. With Ramily waiting on deck. As McMillan gets Nohava to swing and miss for the strikeout. And it'll be the second out of the inning. Ramily going to dig in here with two away. Treasonberg over at third. Ramily with the big two run double, two RBI double in the first inning. Looking for another RBI here. And put the Crusaders back up on top. McMillan's 0 1 is outside for ball one. As Ramley lines it off the glove of Kuroka, Treesenberg's going to score, and the Crusaders take a lead back. It's 3-2. to two. Ramley making some really solid contact here. You know, he had that one bottom center field, and that one just too hard for the, the Paul Prep guy to handle it. Yeah, two very well-hit balls from Ramley. He's drawn in, drove in all three of the Crusaders' runs here today. 
As Hart hits a grounder. That's past the third baseman and into left field for a base hit. Ramley stopping at second. And Hartz has a two-out single. So your bat's finally waking up now. So hits on back-to-back -back pitches for the Crusaders. And now with a runner in scoring position while with Holmes coming up to the dish. Pitches in there for strike one. Two outs, two on here in the bottom of the third. Shaders lead three to two. As Holmes hits a chopper, little little oh, no man's land. Tough play over at first. Holmes is safe. Wow, that was a tough play there for the first baseman. I believe that was. A little bit of confusion on the ball side on who was going to field that. It was a slow roller. Yeah, those are kind of tough, and the ball is kind of hovering in the middle of the, yeah, it's hard. the grass, and no one knows who's going to get it. Yeah, it's, those are tough plays. You don't really know who to go, who, if one of your teammates is going to go for it, or if you should go for it. And at that time, the second baseman had and made a play. Holmes had already beat it out. Yeah, those are kind of some of the situations that guys practice during practice time to really power their game. So Crusaders bases loaded with two outs with Brady Cunningham stepping up. It's a big opportunity. Pitch is low for ball one. Big AB here for the freshman. See what he can he can do under the bright lights. Chance to make a big impression here. Cunningham pops it back into the parking lot. And another hit car. I think we're up to three today. Three in a windshield, it looks like. Not not a good day. Yeah, if you're coming to watch the game with Brother Rice, definitely uh, don't park near the baseball field. So that pitch is in the dirt for ball two. McMillan's 2-1. It's upstairs for ball three. 3-1 three count for Cunningham. Has the hitters count. If it gets to pitch his leg, see if he can drive it. Scoring a couple runs for the Crusaders. So that pitch is low and outside for ball four. Ramley is going to come in to score on the walk. Everyone moves up 90 feet. And Josh Torres comes up now. Base is still loaded. It's a 4-2 lead. Wouldn't be surprised to see a mountain visit here coming up. Interesting to see how DePaul coaching staff is going to handle this. Bullpen is empty, so. It's, it's yeah, you know, high school, in high school, kind of bullpens are kind of a little shaky for some of these teams. It's not like the pros where you got pretty much unlimited pitchers. So Torres stepping in. Base is loaded. That pitches upstairs for ball one. Torres looking to extend this Crusader lead. That pitch in there, drops in there for strike one. Second baseman playing deep, playing on the on the outfield grass. And creeps in to the edge of the dirt. Torres swings and misses on that one for strike two. So a one two count on Torres. Crusaders base is loaded. Crusaders have added two here this inning as Torres swings and misses on that one for strike three to end the inning. But Crusaders add two and retake the lead. It is four to two Crusaders lead heading into the fourth.
Top of the fourth getting underway here. Crusaders lead 4-2. to two. Number 8, Griffin Horn's going to step in for DePaul. Kendrick looking for another quick inning after getting some run support in the bottom half of the third. And pitch misses outside for ball one. You know, Dolly, when you get some run support like that, it looked like bottom of the third, Crusaders' bats seem to be waking up a little bit. As a pitcher, you want to definitely try to make quick innings, quick work of this half inning so they can get that those bats up there while they're still a little warm. Yeah, definitely want to make quick work for both yourself and for the, as they're saying, for your bats, as they've been really on fire recently. McKendrick head on the hitter horn, one and two. This horn fouls it back into the net. Brian, do you recall how many uh, innings McKendrick went last time? Not sure. He's usually like a usually he'd give you usually five innings, five six innings. So it's, it's always good when your starter can eat up most of the game. Yeah. As Horn hits a fly ball into center, Hart's calling off Doherty and makes the catch for the first out. Yeah, as we were saying, it's going starters kind of take majority of the innings. It's rough when you know your starter goes out there and. Struggles, walk some guys, and that's get taken out early in the uh, early in the game. You rely on your bullpen. Yeah, it can definitely be a struggle. I'm not saying Crusaders have a good bullpen, but you know, it's a bad coach, situation. Coaching standpoint, you don't want to rely on your bullpen always to win a game. You want to always have your starter go as long as possible and save some bullpen arms and crucial when you need it in crucial situations. Because you could have a bullpen game one day, and the next day it could be a a tight battle game where you need you need your bullpen, mm -hmm. but then all your guys are tired out because they all were all used the day before. That pitch is fouled back. It's Cam Klein, the hitter. Kendrick's pitch. Just misses low for a ball. 2 1 count. It's McKendrick's 2 1. This is inside for ball three. This count moves to 3 and 1 now in favor of Klein. Kendrick looking to, bat looking to batter his way back here and get the out. That's upstairs for ball four. So Klein draws the walk. And DePaul has a run around with one out. That's going to bring up Aiden Ball to the plate. Yeah, Paul's still having one hit, so. McKendry's done a nice job on the mound today. Yeah. Other than that two run hit. Like you said, it's been their only hit. Just, just got to limit those walks. Those walks were. What got those yeah, runners a on? Walks and a hit by pitch. Yeah, walk hit by pitch. So if you just gotta limit those. Yeah, I've seen a lot of good stuff from the from sophomore today. Game's not over, but I've seen a lot. It's McKendrick's 0-1. That's a chopper over to short first. Cunningham has it over to second. Nice they got him for a double play. Your good old fashioned three six double play. And that'll end the inning. Crusaders lead 4-2 to going into the bottom of the fourth.
Bottom of the fourth, getting underway here. Top of the lineup, up for the Crusaders. It's Chris Doherty stepping in. And Doherty is hit by pitch to start off the inning. So one pitch, one base runner for the Crusaders. You know, right, whatever it takes for really to get on base, just. And we were talking about it just last half inning. This offense seemed to be heating up, and we wanted McKendrick to see if he could work a quick inning. And he did just that. As Nintendo gets a grounder over to first, they throw over to second for one. But the throw over to first is offline. So it'll be a fielder's choice. And then an E6 on the shortstop. So Natanik and Doherty trading places with one out. Trees Gavin Treesenberg stepping in. Ripped a double his last time up. Millens, oh oh, it's high for ball one. Natanic gathers his lead over at first. Macmillan throw over as he Natanic gets back in there. Would not be surprised to see a Natanic steal attempt here. As there he goes, a Treesenberg hits a fly ball into right. Catch is made. Throw over to first. Natanic is back in safely for the second out. So it looks like a little hit and run situation there as Natanic was going, but it seems like Treesenberg just got under it just a little bit. So two gone here. Bottom of the fourth. Aiden Ojava is going to be stepping in. First high, throw down the first. And Natanic back in there. His horn not able to, to pick it. You know, these this DePaul team, they've been focusing on the runners at first. Seen a lot of pickoff attempts from Macmill and a couple throws. Throw downs from the catcher Latko. You no, know, they they worry about these runners at first. These Crusaders have good speed all around their lineup. They like to run. They like to run last year. They like to run this year. Zohava hits a hard grounder over to short. And they're going to go over to second for the force out to end the inning. Quick inning of work there for Macmillan. Score remains the same. We head to the fifth inning. Top of the fifth, getting underway here. Crusaders lead four to two. McKendrick back on for another inning of work. You know he's he's pitched great today. You know heading into the fifth inning of work. Other than those that one inning, you know he's been pretty much lights out. Yeah, you know still only giving up one hit, a couple walks, and a hit by a pitch. But other than that, he's been pretty good.
As this is a fly ball hit into center field. Hart's calling for it and makes the catch for the first out. So a quick first out here to start the fifth inning. As Dylan Heck checked coming up to the plate. Like you're saying earlier, really, DePaul offense only stringing together one hit. Brother Rice five, four runs on five hits. Talk about efficiency there. That's that's what you want out of an offense right there. Yeah, some guys that can up clutch with guys on base, and especially in scoring position, and doing a great job. So McKendrick's pitch clips the top of the zone, four strike one. Kendrick's 1 1 delivery. So there's a chopper foul over by the third base line. Nice play there by the DePaul third base coach. So McKendrick's 1 2 delivery. Got him looking, top of the zone. Strikeout. Sends down Hecht, and there's two away. Hecht might have been looking off speed. There's McKendrick just sort of froze him with the upstairs heater. Yeah, when you have when you have all those pitches, guys don't really know what you're gonna throw, and they, when they're expecting one thing, you know, even the other thing, and they're, they're frozen. And it's in there for strike one. You know, it, just whenever I'd be pitching or, you know, if I'm just playing, you know, MLB The Show or something, mm -hmm. uh, you know, ever a two-strike count, I always like to go that upstairs heater. Gets gets people having to chase and switch up their timing. It's a good good two-strike pitch right there. What was your go-to closer? My go-to closer? Heater. Heater? I don't know. I, I, like, I had a good change-up. I like a change-up. For fun. There's a bunch showing down. McKendrick. Tried to handle it with his glove, cannot come up with it. It's the first time McKendrick's kind of out of trouble there. Normally he's pretty good he's with those. Had some hard comebackers that he's made to look easy, but that time had a little trouble handling it. So Rog will reach. That's going to bring up number 21. Kurkawa is top of the lineup for DePaul. As there's a fly ball, shallow left. Doherty coming on and makes the catch for the third out. So McKendrick, another quick inning of work. We head to the bottom of the fifth. Score remains four to two. Fifth underway here. Crusaders lead 4-2. As Nolan Ramoli, Ramoli 
Can they dig in for the Crusaders? Ramley, that's the guy I've been impressed with today, which with his power. And Three RBI day for Ramley. Yeah. Especially from a young guy, seeing that much talent, I mean, it's amazing to see. It's always nice to see when your young guys are producing like he has been. So Macmillan on for another inning of work for DePaul. So that pitches upstairs for ball two. Ramley looking to get on base again. That pitch is fouled off into the parking lot. Two two count on Ramley. Hearts waiting on deck. The 2-2 two -two pitch is swung on and missed. Four strike three. Hart, Ramley, excuse me, chasing the off speed for out number one. So with one gone here in the bottom of the fifth, Ryan Hart's going to step in. Hart's reach base his last time. He fouls that back. Into the parking lot. Oh no. Bouncing but didn't hit a car. Almost hit my car. Was, yeah, car was a little scared for a second. So that pitch is in the dirt for ball one. A 1 1 delivery as Hearts. Rips it back up the middle for a base hit. Good piece of hitting there from Hartz. Textbook line drive back up the middle. Yeah, Hartz making some solid contact there once again. Just doing little things that are great. So Hartz, after the single by Hartz, Derek Holmes going to step in. See if they put the steal sign on for Hartz. As Holmes swings at the first pitch and fouls it off. So that pitch is in the dirt for ball two. Hearts steals second. On a throw, and now he's going for third. And Hearts is going to be held at three. So Hearts will advance to third on the ball in the third and the overthrow. Hearts didn't get a great jump on that. I think if that throw was online, he most likely would have been out at second. Throw was high, landed in the right field. Hearts is able to take two bags on it and is now 90 feet away. Holmes fouls it off. There's one. Hit a car on the bounce. I think we're up to that number four or five today. If you give those two halves, I'd say it's about two five. halves, five. One two misses outside. Looks like there's some little action in Crusader bullpen. So there's an arm. Getting loose as Holmes hits a ground over to second throw coming home, and he's safe. Drop the ball. The like. catcher dropped the ball. Some costly errors here. Yeah, that's a, that's a play you got to make as a catcher. Yeah, you know, catcher kind of overthrew that ball, and there he. So Holmes picks up the RBI. It's five to two. So after Holmes picks up the RBI, 
It'll be Cunningham stepping in. And Holmes going for second as the throw is going over to first. And Holmes is going to be tagged out at second. So Holmes had the steal sign, but Macmillan already thrown over. Holmes just kind of got caught in the middle of a run down there. So two on, nobody out. Or excuse me, two out, nobody on now for Cunningham. 1-0 count. That pitch is in the dirt for ball two. Which is up upstairs for ball three. So three and zero. Oh, see if Cunningham will have the green light. I I doubt it, but you never know. It's down the middle for strike one. In there for strike two. Count runs full. McMillan doing a nice job of battling back here. As Cunningham swings and misses on that one, and that'll be the third out of the inning. Crusaders add a run on the RBI single from Derek Holmes, and it is five to two as we head to the sixth. Top of the six, getting underway here. Crusaders lead five to two. McKendrick back on for another inning of work. Some action in the DePaul bullpen. So that first pitch is in there for strike one for McKendrick. Number 16, Garen Gutzmer getting loose in the DePaul bullpen. Kendrick really kind of picking the pace up and it's going pretty fast here. I'm liking that. Kendrick wanted to make quick work of this DePaul lineup. We had guys warming up in the DePaul bullpen, maybe. Wants to give him as, less, as least time as possible. Looks like the Crusader bullpen has quieted down, so it looks like if all things go well, this will be McKendrick's ending to finish. Which would be huge. Get back to back games where your yeah. starters f go through six innings. That's huge for the Crusaders. That pitch is outside for a ball. Count moved to three and one. You know, baseball's a long season, so every game you're kind of battling through the bullpen every day. Kind of takes a beat on just the pitch of the whole team. Yeah, always nice when you know your bullpen getting some rest for a couple of days when your starters do most of the work. So McKendrick pitch misses just high for ball four. So McKendrick starts off the winning for a inning for with a walk.
or how far McBride's going to let Kendrick go here before he at least takes a mound visit. Yeah, we'll see. He hasn't neither team has made a mound visit yet today. Not sure. A little delay here. Trouble with the catcher, catcher's gear maybe. Umpire might. Umpire. Umpire. Mask is off. Not sure if that was. We're back. Kendricks pitches upstairs for ball one. Latko, the runner at first. Latko gathering his lead over at first, retreating it back a little bit. That's, that's a fly ball into right field. Doherty under it and makes the catch for the first out. And one cool thing about we do broadcast out here versus up in the up in the box that we could hear the players on the outfield. I mean, we heard it earlier in the game. The outfielders just calling calling each other off, calling for a play, and that it's kind of like a cool thing to hear. Is it shows like communication is important in baseball. You don't want any confusion. Oh, I thought you don't want a ball to drop and be like, oh, I thought you were going to say this. Cool that you can hear each other calling off the calling each other off. Yeah, that's what makes teams great. Is the little things, you know, communication and just little plays matter. You know, because they add up. <coughs> Kendricks 1-0 in there for strike one Latko at second now after the pass ball from Torres so runner in scoring position for DePaul with one out here in the sixth inning Latko stealing third a liner right back to McKendrick, and that's going to be a double play. What a way to end the inning. Yeah, McKendrick there with a nice, quick reflex play, and throwing it to second, get double play. That's, that's what you want. Another liner right back to McKendrick, making things look easy. We head to the bottom of the sixth. Crusaders lead 5-2. to two. Bama six getting underway here. Crusaders lead five to two. Pinch hitter coming in for Crusaders, number 35, Xander Metke. Metke, a transfer student, first year at Rice. 
slots in well with this team. First pitch is high for ball one. McKee, another good size, big size player for this Crusader team. So that pitch is down by the knees for strike one. Macmillan on for another inning of work. So that pitch is low. It's number 16, Garen Gutzmer was warming up in the bullpen for DePaul earlier. Just walked off now, so I have to imagine if Macmillan gets in any trouble, he'll be Gutzmer will be coming in. It's breaking balls in the dirt for a ball. Count runs full. Matt Key does a nice job following that off. No car there, by the way. It's always a, always a good thing when no cars are hit. Yeah. As Matt Key rips it up the middle, nice backhand stop by the second baseman, throw over to first. And Metke beats it out. Oh, that's an infield hit. Great hustle there by Metke. Great backhand stop by the second baseman, yeah, I was too. impressed by that. Just a tough play all around. Oh, Chris Doherty. Chris Doherty coming in to hit. There's a pinch runner for Crusaders. Number six, Lance Moon. Coming to run on for Metke. Top of the line, lineup flips over. It's Doherty stepping in. Doherty showing bunt, gets the bunt down. That's going to be a foul, fair ball, excuse me. And Doherty gets the job done with the sacrifice bunt. Almost beat that out. Yeah, I thought that was, that was close. I feel good. Nice bunt there by Doherty. Kind of letting it roll, but not too fast. He's showing great hustle all day today, running down the line, <laughs> making every play close. So Moon in scoring position now with four Natanic. Pitch is low for ball one. Always love insurance runs when you can get them. This would be a big one here. Yeah, in the game of baseball, teams can get hot in one inning and they can put, they can tie this game up real quick, so it's never over. This pitch is in there, gets the outside part of the zone for strike two. <coughs> or strike one, excuse me. Macmillan's 1 1 delivery. Natanic goes down and gets it, but fouls it back. Ooh, ball hit the car next to mine. Man, you're really uh, uh, playing dangerous. I, 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 I think I might have parked a little too close to the field today. Coach O'Connell's car last year got his windshield shattered. Yeah, I remember that me. one too. I was there. I think we were on the broadcast when that yeah. happened. Gotta be rough to watch your car just get. It's an Atanic rips up another one, hit it on the line. It's another car hit. That's yeah, power behind it too. I mean these roughs over here, they are just getting on the cars. Macmillan's two two delivery. And another foul ball by Natanic. Tannic doing a nice job of staying alive here, fighting off pitches. Good quality at bat. Tannic gets a hard grounder, and that's going to be passed to shortstop into center field for a base hit. Moon rounding third. He's going to go home. No one covering second. Tannic's going to advance to second, and that's going to be an RBI single and an advance for Tannic. 
you know, a pitcher there was looking to catch the ball and go to second, but to catch the tank there, but it's like you said, no one was going to cover it, so. So good plate appearance there from Natanik. Filed off a couple tough pitches. Was sent, was waiting for his pitch, found it, drove it right back up the middle. So there's Natanik and Moon trade places at second. And Treesenberg going to come up with a chance to bring Natanik home. So that first pitch is low for ball one. Really impressed with the Crusaders. Just seems like every time someone's on base, they're scoring on it. Really efficient there. Treesenberg fouls it back. You know, like they've, like you said, when they've had opportunities, they've been able to come through, and that was been a bit of a struggle. It was a struggle down when they were in Kentucky over spring break. You know, looking at the Twitter feed, they had they had chances, but they weren't able to get the get the runs when they had the guys in scoring position. But it's nice to see that they've starting to warm up now when I, when they're able to execute. Yeah, they get a little the chance. more aggressive, swinging the bats, and just capitalizing on those guys that are on base in scoring position. <laughs> you know, it's been early, early in the season still, so still some some learning games. As CCL play just started. Yep, CCL play for the rest rest of the season now, except the last couple games of the season. So that pitch is in there for strike two. Definitely excited to see what the Crusader team can do this year. Make some noise, hopefully in the CCL and playoffs. So McMillan's pitch is fouled off again from Treasonberg. The 2-2 two -two pitch as Trees hits a fly ball into center. Catch is made, and Natanik is going to retreat back to second. Talking so about conference play, Crusaders have Travis St. Ignatius tomorrow, and then we'll host them here again on Thursday. Yeah, a lot of talented teams in the CCL this year, as always, for every sport, it seems like. Uh Carmel's good. St. Lawrence. Yeah, CCL Blue is a tough division. You have St. Lawrence, Carmel, St. Rita, Ignatius, new addition. Yeah. It's a little mound visit for DePaul. It's like a guy in the Brother Rice bullpen, too, starting to get warmed up, but we'll see where that goes. Interesting to see if McKendrick will come back out to try to finish it or if they'll do what they did on Saturday with. What Cunningham? Cunningham pitched six innings, and then brought in a new pitcher to close it out. Yeah, I'm sure that's what they're gonna do again today. I would assume, um, but can't see who's warming up yet. The Crusaders brought in Metkey to close it off on Saturday. So there's a pitching change for DePaul as number 16 Gutsmer coming in. Brian, you watch the Masters at all? Any interested in that? I watched a little bit. Didn't watch a lot. Scotty, Scotty played a great round last, this last yeah. round. Seven, seven birdies on yesterday. Yeah, it was a Great tournament. Shambo looked like he was going to have it, but he kind of yeah. choked towards the end of the tournament and ended up eventually not even. Two Masters championships at 27 is it's un, it's unheard of. Mm -hmm. Golly, NBA play-in on Wednesday. Bulls hosting the Hawks. How are we feeling about that, Dally? Yeah, so I think it's a miracle they're in it. You know, I was watching the beginning of the season. They were struggling. Uh, they really stepped it up towards the end of it. And trying to take Carter back, did big addition, seems yeah. like. And, uh, yeah, a lot of the young guys in the Bulls stepping up. I would assume Kobe White. Kobe White's been huge for them this year. Yeah. No easy task, though. If they do beat the Hawks, then they get, they get a date with either the 76ers or the Heat, which is either way. 
not a, not an easy matchup. You know, if you want to win a championship, you're going to have to play eventually. So yeah. And then, of course, you beat one of them. Then you get to go to Boston, who's been the best team in the NBA all year. So definitely it's not, not easy. E- not an easy path. No. Sticking with the little basketball news. Uh, USA Basketball finalizing its 2024 Olympic roster inc- that includes Steph Curry, LeBron James, Kevin Durant, Jason Tatum, Joel Embiid, Devin Booker, Terry's Halliburton, Anith- Anith- Anthony Edwards, Drew Holiday, Bam Adebayo, and Anthony Davis. Team could still open one spot, but uh, they're, they, they're coming for gold yeah. in the summer. It's always fun to watch the Olympics, especially basketball. Yep. You could say underperformed. You could some could say last time. So yeah, you know, uh, we'll see what they do this year. Any thoughts on other Olympic stuff? Favorite event? Favorite event? I don't know. It's a tough one. I, I'm a big basketball guy, so I would say basketball is my favorite sport to watch. But uh, you know, I think we're a winter Olympics guy. I'm gonna take winter. I haven't watched. I didn't, I didn't watch the winter one last time. Oh. But. We can continue the best point thoughts in the UConn uh, back to back. Uh, I mean, they were clearly the best team all tournament. I don't think anyone was beating them. Yeah. Snohava grounds out to third to end the inning. We head to the top of the seventh. Crusaders look to close it out as they lead six to two. Top of the seventh, getting underway here. McKendrick back on for the seventh inning. Looking to close out the game and get a complete game victory. So there is some catch going on in the Crusader bullpen. So if needed, they'll have someone to bring in. As hitter shows bunt, but pitches pulls back his pitches high for ball one. McKendrick's 1-0. A little check swing off the knob of the bat. It's not always how you draw it up if you're a hitter. Nothing would be worse when you're trying to duck out of the way out of the pitch, but don't bring the bat down. And it catches a piece of the bat, causing a foul ball. And it's fouled back in the net, and it's 1-2. and two. The one two from McKendrick. Just missed for a ball. It's a good placement there by McKendrick. The two two from McKendrick. As foul ball. Kendrick looking to close things out here. Huge for the Crusaders to save the bullpen an extra day. Get some get some rest in them. Pitch is high for ball three. And the count is running full.
So that pitch is upstairs for ball four, so a leadoff walk issued. And Coach McBride's going to walk out to the mound. And this could be it for McKendrick. As it is, as Coach McBride's going to take the ball from McKendrick as he walks off the mound. Great day for McKendrick. Six innings. Pitch great. And nothing more you could ask from from your starter. So it looks like it's going to be a bit of a defensive adjustment. Natanik, she's going to come in from second to try and close things out. Natanik definitely a pretty good closer. I've seen a lot of good stuff from him last year. I haven't seen him too much this year, but definitely gets the job done here. Tanik, another guy with high velocity, has some good movement on his off speed. So with that defensive adjustment, Natanik coming in from second to come on the mound. Wow. Uh, number 18, Charlie Rosnick coming in to play second. Rosnick is another sophomore on this team, another one of these young and upcoming stars. So left side of the infield, freshmen and sophomores. Or excuse me, right side of the infield. First base, second base, freshman and sophomore. At pitch misses the outside for ball. Pitch looked good. Yeah, I'm talking about losses from this year and last year. Randall Nodden also a departure. And Randall Nodden is there. Splitting time and the catching duties between Josh Torres and Traylon Webster. Webster also a sophomore, so a lot of these guys, sophomores, a couple freshmen, making a big impact. Yeah, Bryce is such a whole all, whole coach that such a good, such a good job at developing these young guys to make them into phenomenal players. Three and one count. Natanik gonna try to battle his way back. As that's a foul off on the 99th. And count will run full. The three two from Natanik. That's roped into center. Hearts is there. He makes the catch for this first out. So one gone now. Middle infield going to stay double play depth. As Pribble lays down the bunt, Natanik barehand throw to first. Cunningham can't hold on to it. So Pribble will reach base. Natanik have thrown the heat across the diamond. Tan Natanik's got a on. strong arm. Almost looks like he hit the, the runner there. Cunningham unable to hold on to the 
the throw by Natanik. So runners on first and second with one out for DePaul. As is one on and foul back in the net. As Heck, the hitter. Tannic looking to close it out. Would love a double play ball here. Pitch in there for a strike. And it's nothing and two on Hecht. Looking heater here from Tannic. Goes off speed. Hecht gets under it. Hartz calls it. And grabs it for the second out. DePaul down there, last out. So number 14, Rog, stepping in with DePaul down there, their last out. Two runners on, two out. Top of the seventh as Natanik's first pitch is in there, first strike. The 0 1 from Natanik. Off speed just misses on the outside part of the zone. Haven't seen too many outside calls. A couple good, good spots from Natanik and McKendrick, but not getting the call. One one. Pitch is low and it's gonna be no throw. As both runners advance, you now both runners in scoring position with two out. Crusaders lead six to two. Two one count. Tannic kicks fires. There's a hard grounder up the middle for a base hit. Hartz fields it. Runner around third. Throw goes into second. And that's a two RBI single, and it's six to four. Just like that, it's totally the game's not over until it's over, and uh, should have got a little bit of pickle there. And so now, six four game after Rog, two RBI single. That brings the tying run to the plate with Kurokawa. As he first pitch swinging, hits that into center for a base hit. Hart's trouble fielding it. Doherty better back him up. Throw into second. So now runners on the corners now. Tanex might get a little too comfortable. Some of these pitches have been giving them just right down the middle. And third out is always, last yeah. out of the baseball game is always the hardest out to get. As Coach McBride's going to come out, have a little meeting. Within Coach Brad Summer right now, just calm down and calm down. Just be yourself. We've had it. Just we need to stop thinking. I don't know. Just don't overdo it. Attack, attack this hitter. I would say. It's Paul Prop doing a good job, not giving up. You know, staying in this game, staying motivated. It's one of the harder things to do, probably. I would say in sports, just staying motivated when you're down. It's this is this is when, this is what this is how you know it's CCL blue action. You know, two great teams going at it. And it's not over until that last out is made. So Latko stepping in for DePaul. Tying the run at first. Pitches high for ball one. I wonder if Kurokoa is going to try to steal second, put himself in scoring position where a base hit would tie the game. Yeah, we haven't, said, we haven't seen Torres too much uh, test the arm. It's a pop-up into foul territory. Cunningham makes the grab, and that will do it. Little drama here in the seventh, but Crusaders escape with a 6-4 to four victory, and they're back to 500. This win puts them back at 8-8. Eight eight. Good way to bring them back into 500 play. 
sweeping DePaul series, taking the 12 to 5 win on Saturday and a 6 to 4 win here today. Great work from McKendrick today. Six innings, only two runs allowed. He was did everything that you want from a starting pitcher. Natanic came in, got a little hit up a little bit, but was able to get the job done and shut shut the door as Crusaders escape with the win. That's going to do it here for our broadcast tonight. I'm Brian Sheehan. Thank you to our producer slash color commentator, Brian Dalgale, our cameraman, Charlie Snyder, and our producer for those last two innings, Jack Zampillo. Have a good night. <laughs>